Welcome, and thank you for joining me on a spring edition tour of Franklin Park's Community Garden Campus. My name is Sean McKay, and I would like to talk about the Community Gardens with Jenny Pope, the Director of Community Outreach and Education at Franklin Park Conservatory. Let's begin by asking, what's a community garden? You know, that's a good question, and I think it's changed over time. So traditionally, a community garden was a, um, you had a plot, you had a small plot of land that you worked with, with your neighbors. Is this um, publicly owned? Or it's it public, publicly owned, usually. Okay. Um, here at the conservatory, we actually do have uh, 40 community garden plots that are open to our neighbors. You sign up, you pay a fee, it's $25 a year. Um, to have a community garden plot. There's some community gardens in neighbor, neighborhoods that are maybe a large piece of land that everybody's working together cooperatively, so you don't have your own little plot, but you're sharing it. And then there's been a real move into urban agriculture where you're um, cultivating the land and the produce is might be part of a social enterprise where you're selling a portion of it to help fund the work of the community garden, but then another portion may be going to food banks uh, to help your neighbors. Um, some of the community gardens are now really focused on education. Highland Youth Garden is a beautiful community garden that's devoted to um, youth education, so the local schools come in. What is the impact of this space to our neighborhood? You know, I, I, I'm talking a lot about growing to green, mm -hmm. but our um, department works with schools. Um, we do school programs year-round. Last year we worked with 480 schools, over 13,000 students and teachers to work in the programs, um, focused on the natural environment, plants, um, ecosystems. We have a farmer's market. Oh, good! <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I will say, um, you know, there's the chance for your garden to get a little wild and weedy if you don't have a strong volunteer core or. Um, gardeners who are paying attention to the plot, but I think most of the time it's a real positive in the neighborhood because um, neighbors get to know each other, they start watching out for each other, um, a lot of times they share meals together. Um, your, um, what you're referring to, um, let's say you're developing a community garden. Um, on an old construction site, then there is re remediation. Um, they call that a brown field. Yeah. So um, if you have a brown field environment, there's a good chance you are going to be doing raised beds because to um, clean out all that soil and replace it um, is tough. So raised beds are great in that situation. But at the conservatory, we didn't have that type of environment. So the, um, we were very fortunate we were able to develop um, brown beds for our um, community garden plots. And so it just depends, it depends on your soil conditions. In Central Ohio, it's pretty <laughs> notorious for clay. So, clay is very yeah. dense. <laughs> yes. But, it's very dense. But, but it's very dense. <laughs> yes. So depending on where you are, um, you know, you may raise beds as you can. My tour ends here at the Serenity Garden of the Muses. Jenny, thank you so much for making such a big impact on our community and taking the time to speak to me.